In this video, let us look into a new topic called as Euclid's Division Lemma. So Euclid's Division Lemma is nothing but, it's just a restatement of the long division that we've been doing since so many years now. But before that, the word lemma is kind of new to us. So let's just get done with understanding what it means. What does the word lemma mean? So a lemma is nothing but it is a proven statement which is used to prove other statements. So that's pretty much it. That's lemma. So don't confuse yourself over lemma. So now let's look into what exactly it's Euclid's division lemma. A simple statement to start off with and then we will get into the actual or the formal definition part of the Euclid's division lemma. So here is a simple statement about Euclid's division lemma. It states that any positive integer a can be divided by any other positive integer b in such a way that it leaves a remainder r that is smaller than b. That is nothing but the divisor, which makes sense, right? It's a very simple explanation of the Euclid's division lemma, which I'll illustrate to you with the help of an example. Now, consider the division of one positive integer by another, say 58 divided by 9. So the division can be carried out like this. 58 divided by 9 is nothing but 9 6 times is 54 and the remainder is 4 here. So now while carrying out this division we had to think of about the largest multiple of 9 which does not exceed 58 so that after subtraction the remainder 4 is still less than the divisor. Obviously right because if the remainder is 9 or more than 9 this should have been greater than 6. If it was, uh, say for example, if the remainder was 0, or say the remainder was 9, then we might have have to add another number to this. The result of this division is that we get two integers, namely 6 and 4. 6 is the quotient, and 4 is called the, called the remainder, and the remainder has to be smaller than 9, and if you do it correctly, it will be smaller than 9. So now we can also write this or represent this like this. 58 equals 9 times 6 plus 4, right? This equal to is justified because 9 times 6 is 54 and 54 plus 4 is 58, which is equal to 58 that we've got on the left-hand side. So in this case, we can clearly say that 0 is lesser than or equal to 4 and 4 is definitely less than 9. So this is the most important thing as far as Euclid's division lemma is concerned. So now let's quickly apply the same kind of representation to another pair of integers, say for example 25,7. So how do you represent this like this? Now this will be 25 equals 7 times 3 because 25 is divided by 7 in this case. So the maximum that you can multiply to 7 to get close to 25 is 3 because more than that it crosses 25. So 7 times 3 and how much should you add it to get it to 25? It is 4 because 7 times 3 is 21 and 21 plus 4 is 25. So in this case also we can say that 0 is less than or equal to 4 and it's less than 7 for sure because 7 goes into 25 thrice and leaves a remainder 4. So that is it. This is all that is about Euclid's division lemma. So one thing that's left to complete in this video is the formula, the actual definition of the Euclid's division lemma. So here is the actual definition of Euclid's division lemma, or the formal definition of it. Let a and b be any two positive integers, then there exists unique integers q and r, here q represents quotient and r represents a remainder, such that a equals bq plus r, where r is greater than or equal to 0, but it's definitely less than b. Just compare this and this, and then you'll understand it better. So this is all that there is about Euclid's division lemma.